Hi, <clears throat> I'm Rochelle Fisher from Sentinel One. I'm super excited to be presenting this webinar hosted by WeSys. We're going to share some slides now. It'll take me just a second. Okay. So as Lynn Dong, the executive director of Women in Cybersecurity would say, we often go by our acronym WeSys, as in We Sisters, because we're a sisterhood in cybersecurity. I highly recommend that you see the previously recorded webinars for WeSys on Bright Talk. Not only are they enlightening, but you'll also hear Lynn give the accurate five minute overview of the mission of WeSys and the opportunities this organization can offer you. So today we're going to talk about how a corporate culture of diversity and inclusion can lead to innovative methodologies that increase the quality of a product. I'll start off by a short introduction of myself. I promise I will stick only to the points that are relative that are relevant to what comes later. Then we're going to look at some of the challenges we face that are based on biases. One of the biases that we'll talk about, you are really familiar with, I am sure. And another one is something that you might not be aware of. We'll talk about how to overcome the challenges by overcoming fears and taking risks and being assertive. And then we will showcase how overcoming these challenges led to an innovation in Sentinel-1. We'll go over the key takeaways and then we'll open the discussion to questions and answers. So a bit about me. In 1995, I was taking an intensive programming course, and on the last day, I discovered I was pregnant. After the maternity leave, when I came back, I found I had forgotten too much to go into high tech in that direction. So I took a different course and came in on a different profession, and the importance of that is something we'll get into later. After a number of years, I got into a software company that made military mission rehearsal software. So starting in the area of security. And a year later, I got into cybersecurity. In 2017, I joined Sentinel One. Sentinel One was founded in 2013, which explains that my entry in 2017 wasn't so late. The headquarters of Sentinel One is in Mountain View, California, with a large R&D base in Tel Aviv and a growing R&D HQ in Prague. It has over 1,000 employees worldwide. Sentinel One is also a provider of FedRAMP, and all of the code and other assets that are created by global teams are reviewed by Americans on American soil. Sentinel One is on Deloitte's Technology Fast 500 list and serves four of the Fortune 10 as our customers. Along with the accolades that you see here, Sentinel One also won the 2021 Comparable, Comparably Awards for Diversity and Global Culture. And Sentinel One is a strategic partner with WESIS. So we'll talk about some of the challenges of two specific biases and how we get past them with assertiveness. You've all heard of this, though I hope you haven't all felt it. In a company I worked in in the past, I finally got up the gumption to ask to become team leader when the position became available. My manager at the time said that he would promote two of us to be co-team leaders because somebody else on the team already had team leader experience. Never mind that he completely ignored I had the same experience on my CV. That's not the challenge. The challenge is that this other person took the promotion on condition that he got a raise. And I assumed a raise would come with the promotion. You can imagine my surprise, my shock, when I saw my first paycheck and saw this wasn't true. I had to ask for the raise and got it only months later. So how did I overcome this challenge? I joined Sentinel One. During the recruitment experience, they offered a salary that was slightly higher than what I was expecting. They explained that they give salaries based on international reports, based on people's roles and the level of the role and maybe a few other parameters. 
So find an employer or be the employer who does the numbers by these current international reports without any regard to gender or background or anything that could be wholly irrelevant to a person's potential worth to the company. But what if you can't find an opening in Sentinel-1 or similar company? Then you have to ask for what you deserve. My father gave me the best pay advice. He used to say, women get paid less than men because they ask for less. Women get promoted less often and less high because they don't ask for the jobs and titles they deserve. Ask for more than what you think you deserve and you'll get closer to what you are worth. You have to take the risk. You won't get the rewards if you don't ask. You must over overcome your fears of rocking the boat or being seen as a troublemaker to be able to thrive, to be able to get the pay equity. And it isn't just me, of course. The statistics show that pay equity is a challenge that continues to be an issue. So we see here that Exabeam said in 2020, that only in Singapore, the UK, and Germany, they reported that the pay was okay, that there was no gap in pay. But actually on the OECD reports, which are direct reports from each member company, country, we see that the exabeam was actually more about women's satisfaction with their pay. And maybe that satisfaction has something to do with an imposter feeling, the feeling that you don't deserve the money that you're getting, that you don't deserve to be able to support your families. It's something that women are dealing with. But here we know the pay equity is a real challenge. We see these gaps. And if you look at the countries with the largest gaps furthest to the right, some of these countries have laws that give women tax deductions. So it's known to the governments that this gap exists. They make laws to try to fix it, but that can only take you so far. At some point, you have to stand up for yourself. Now, the next challenge is something you might not be aware of, but let's talk about a symptom of it that I'm sure most of you have felt. For me, this was when a few years ago, I met with a peer to discuss something. I had a question to ask. <clears throat> I don't remember what it was. I do remember that I couldn't sit silently. I lost my patience and I interrupted him and said something like, so you're saying that the new machine learning algorithm works faster because in one stage you change the protocol to use one without a handshake, right? And he looked at me and said, oh, I didn't realize you understood handshakes. And then he left without answering my question. This challenge might seem like a nothing thing or like something that happens all the time, so why bother about it? But if I go back to when I was 18 and my boss had, to put in quotes, mansplained how to file alphabetically, I ended up in the hospital because when my father came to pick me up after work, I complained of seeing spots and that my right arm had gone numb. So he turned the car right around and took me to the hospital. It turned out I was having a migraine and not a stroke like he was figuring. But this is the point, having the obvious or even our own work explained to us can be frustrating and even debilitating. It is not something to accept. It is a challenge to get over. And I do suggest that when this happens to you, you interrupt and let them know what you know or even what you own. And that challenge brings me to the spotlight of the webinar because I didn't get this over explanation because I was a woman, mainly. I got it because of my role. If you're in cybersecurity because you are a hunter, IT, a student, a CISO, you might think this is what it is. This is what I studied for. This is cybersecurity. 
But think about the software you rely on. Cybersecurity vendors such as Sentinel One are software vendors. And in these companies, there are as many roles as in other software companies, coders, testers, designers, and more. And me, I'm a technical writer. Remember in the beginning when I told you I'd completed a programming course in 1995? And all those years in high tech with a broad knowledge and exposure to networking, coding, security, and various high tech? That means that if you have an idea of what a technical writer is and what background a technical writer has, I probably don't fit it. Being what you are and where you are, you have probably excluded someone because of their role. As a student of the sciences, did you look down on students of the arts? As a professional, did you feel that inviting a designer or a writer to a meeting was pointless because it would have been over their heads? This is the kind of exclusion we faced. And how we overcame that challenge and how we improved the product is what we're going to look at next. So first I need to explain a little bit about API. And if I'm over explaining, please forgive me. I'm trying to keep everyone in the loop without being able to see you. So first we have a GUI. This is a small piece of the web UI of Sentinel-1. And we're going to create a very simple object, a group with all the default values. It's click, click, enter name, click, click, click again. Now, a company that creates software will usually start with a GUI and deliver this. Here we see that it's done and we're going to look. Here is the group made, we says GUI. I'm going to stop the video because it's going to create another group, which is again, exactly the same thing. No shortcuts, click, 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 enter, click, 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 right? Now Sentinel-1 does the reverse of what most companies do. Most products are created first the GUI, and then if enough customers ask for it, they'll make maybe 10 or 20 APIs. Sentinel-1 is different. First, we make the API so it has all of the features, and then we make the GUI. That means that our API is huge, powerful, feature-rich. It's really quite amazing. Down here, I have a snippet of Postman, and this API command, I copied from the API documentation, and then I copied in the data, and I changed to values that would actually work. That's all I have to do for the API, and then I can send it. Let's take a look. So we send this request. And now if I wanna make a second group, I just change the name and send it again. And you'll see in a couple of minutes, actually seconds, we've created multiple groups. Let's let it run for just a minute. It's The API is especially powerful in something like Postman where you can save the request, make a simple change and run it. And here you see it made these four groups while I was talking. The API can be really powerful, not only for making multiple objects quickly, but also for running scripts, automating your daily tasks. It can be really, really powerful, but without good documentation, an API is useless. You have to know what the syntax is, what the required data points are, and so on. So when we first saw the API docs of four or five years ago, as technical writers, we saw the text first. We found a few mistakes here and there, you know, spelling, grammar, that type of thing. But R&D did not have a priority to fix the text. They were working on real features. So I let it sit. A couple of years later, and users are sending feedback about the mistakes. My manager asks if we can fix them, and I have to tell him, that the API docs are generated from the code and we as technical writers do not have permissions to touch the code. So he lets it sit. Then I start thinking, why don't we have permissions? Could we? Should we? 
In all of my past experience, technical writers never had permissions to touch the code. We could break a build. How scary is that? And as soon as I thought that word, fear, I knew I was on the wrong track. If I am afraid of a risk, it is a risk worth investigating. Here's one of my favorite quotes from Medina. You cannot be successful without taking risks. And this is Adina Friedman, president and CEO of NASDAQ. So I asked the R&D manager again about fixing the API docs. And again, there's no priority. But this time, the area of development is given to a different manager. And he tells me I should talk to her. I had a meeting with her. She showed me the code. It's in a language I know. And in less than 30 minutes, she and I had a plan for the technical writers to get permissions to GitHub and change the code. She showed me how to use GitHub to be included in the development of the product. In the first GitHub commit that I made, she was the prover and she did due diligence. If you know GitHub, you know it's easy to see every line that is changed in a file. So in the first 10 files I changed, she found a mistake where it incorrectly moved a, a piece of punctuation that I thought, and it was actually code syntax. She fixed the mistake so that the build wouldn't be delayed, but then she explained to me what the mistake was. I learned from it. I pushed another 30 files of change and they were all approved and in the build without issue. Now all the technical writers in Sentinel-1 are trained in GitHub and can edit the code for the displayed text. The innovation in methodology changes the way that we work and it has improved the text of the API docs. It is part of our OKRs, our expectations to participate in the development of the product. And this is expanded from the API docs to committing the product to help ourselves rather than delivering a file for someone else to commit. And because we committed ourselves, we can also test it ourselves for the first sanity. This saves everybody a lot of time and actually does help the quality of the product. Our first successful step in the back end, this API doc, also helped us make the next steps, building our own automation tools for documentation. The product documentation team of Sentinel-1 is doing work that is cutting edge for technical writers and innovative for our industry. We needed the support of an R&D manager who happened to be a woman. We needed help when issues came up, which that manager gave by asking people on her team to train us. I don't know if it was about being a woman that led her to get us training rather than just fixing the issues. And I don't know if it was being a man that blocked the first ask. I do know that we have an awesome API with documentation that has gotten good user feedback and that the team is proud of that the team of technical writers in Sentinel-1 has major tech skills. And it was a conversation between women, follow through and personal support that enabled this to happen. When one woman proves her abilities, stereotypes are broken down. Our abilities, fearlessness and willingness to learn impact the women around us and the women our male colleagues will work with in the future. The only way to succeed is to be competent. You learn, you make mistakes, you learn again, and you never let mistakes stop you from continuing. You promote the change that you want to see because the only way to get ahead, to thrive more than just succeed, is to take risks. There will always be people who are against change, who will try to stop change. And this is where relentless assertiveness comes in. You have an idea, you push. Thank you. So now we will stop the slides and open the discussion for questions.
Okay, looking for questions. I think Morgan is online. Morgan, do we have any? Here we go. It's the first question. Do you have tips on how to be assertive about pushing a change that you want? Absolutely. There are two parts of it. First, you want to go through an engineering process. You see a lack. Never try to push a change just to have a change, just to have your name out there. Do it because there is something missing, something that you can make better. Then you create your plan. You have a solution. You write it up or you make a workflow for a program. You do the first planning stage. Then the second part is part of change management. And actually, Ben Franklin really explained this well in his autobiography. When you get to this point, before you've done any more work, you find supporters. And this is where having a sisterhood and relying on your women and joining together really comes in handy. You bring them in, you say you have an idea, you let their questions and their concerns lead you in tweaking your plan, in tweaking your presentation. <clears throat> then when you're ready, you get your presentation ready, you bring your supporters in when you need to talk with the managers or whoever needs to approve this going forward. <clears throat> and then when it goes, you might have to push for it. They might have said, well, it's a good idea, but. And during this time, you're keeping your paper trail. Your supporters know there are multiple people in all the presentations and in the talks. It's very important that you keep your trail, right? When it comes time, you implement it and you make sure that you give credit where it's due to all the other people and you give credit to yourself, that your managers and your colleagues know this was your innovation. That's a pretty hard thing for some women to do. And it might be easier just to be the one who gives credit to everybody else, which is also a way of engraving in stone that it was your idea. Getting the change done might seem like that's the only thing that is important. It is up to a point because you need to make sure that you get credit for the changes that you made. Next question. What advice do you have for overcoming the fear factor for asking for what you want? Excellent. Never go in cold when you're asking for a raise or a promotion or a change in position. Come in with what I said before, with you've given yourself credit. Come in and say, look, I have done this and this and this. And they say, yeah, we know. Well, I think I deserve a raise. And if they're going to ask you, well, how much of a raise? Ask for more than what you think you deserve. You will get closer to what they will be willing to pay and you'll get closer to what you're worth, which will be higher than what your instinct says you should ask for. Always come in with your documentation and don't be afraid. Nobody's going to fire you for asking for a raise or promotion. And yet there's something in all of us that makes us tense up, makes us nervous when we talk to our managers about this type of thing. You have to get past it. Swallow your fear, take the risk, because at this point, the only risk you have is them saying no. Next, did the technical writers create the API system that you showed us? Excellent question because it's a beautiful system. No, we didn't. There were some awesome people in the front end who built the whole platform uh, to make it run faster than the platform we had four years ago, four or five years ago. What the technical writers actually did was the small pieces of text that explain what each command does which is why changing that and letting us update it was not a priority at first. And it was, it was a bigger risk. Like why risk breaking the build just to fix this, these small mistakes. And the reason that became a priority is because users complained about it. Users saw mistakes in typos and in grammar and would tell us, well, there's a mistake here or there. And we said, look, 
we're your best bet for finding these mistakes, for writing it better, simplified, making it easy to understand. And from there, everything rolled up. Next, I have a question. Do you know how I can become digital skilled lawyer? I do not know. <laughs> Next question. I never could ask for a raise or promotion. Do you have tips? So it is getting over that fear. Working through the fear, you're not gonna get over it because there's something in all of us, some voice of our grandmothers that says, don't show off. You know, something that is still keeping women of the millennium down. It's keeping us in our minds down, saying we don't deserve it. There's, you have to grab hold of it and continue anyway. Is Sentinel One hiring now? Actually, there are open positions in the United States and in Prague. If you go to sentinelone.com and look at the careers, you can find openings there. Take a look at what is going on, what you can go for it. And that's all the questions we have. So as far as I can see, we are done. Um, and Morgan, I'm going to let you decide what to do next.